Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel. And here's a question from the Solomon collection. This is a Solomon um, E from the C2 collection. And it's question number nine from my end of topic worksheet from P2, which is integration number eight. Um, so this is question five from the Solomon E paper. And the first part of the question is about just simply writing down the exact value of cosine pi over six. Uh, well, we know that the cosine of pi over six, or we should know, is equal to root three over two. And you can just check that with your calculator if you wish to. Okay, so we just take a calculator, make sure that we are in radian mode, which we are. So we just press cosine, and we put pi over six, pi divided by six, and that gives us root three over two, right? The exact value, they don't want the decimal value like this, nope. They want the exact value. Okay, so you, that's the answer to part A, very simple. Part B says the finite region R is bounded by the curve Y equals cosine squared X, where X is measured in radians. The positive coordinate axes and the line X equals pi over three. So you have something like this. You've got, you've got your, let me just make this a bit thinner. You've got your Y axis, you got your x-axis, okay, and you've got your curve. We d just say we don't know what it looks like. Um, we don't have to know what it looks like right now. And you've got your line x equals pi over 3. That's the line x equals pi over 3. Um, it says using three equally spaced ordinates. Now, it doesn't mean three trapeziums. It means there should be three lines going up and we're going to start from um, the between the uh, x-axis all right so we're going to start from zero because it's it's what's enclosed between the axes so it starts from x equals zero so the first ordinate let me just draw it um, in a different color uh, the first ordinate is going to be from the i need to my line sorry the first ordinate is going to be from the x-axis Okay, and this is the first ordinate. The second ordinate is going to be, you know, they're equally spaced, so it's going to be somewhere over there, and the third ordinate is going to be the end. So basically, what, when you have three ordinates, that makes two, tri uh, two trapeziums. So this could have said using two strips or two trapeziums. But when they talk about ordinates, they're talking about this line that goes up. It's like this is the Y ordinate. So this, sorry, this is the x ordinate, okay? And then you got the y ordinate. So you got the x and the y ordinates give you the coordinates. So this is the x ordinate. It tells you what the x value is of that point. Okay, so that's x equals zero. That's x equals pi over three. Uh, pi over three. Then you have the y ordinates, which are these lines that go across. So together they give you the coordinates. So that's what it means by ordinate. It's a line that goes. So the the the, the x ordinate of this point starts from zero. And this starts from, well, we can work out what it is. They have to be equally spaced. So what we're going to do is we're going to take um, this distance, pi over 3, and divide it by 2. Pi over 3 divided by 2 will give us, what's happened to this? Okay, that's going to give us pi over 6. Okay, so this is pi over 6. All right, so we have to find the area of this trapezium and the area of that trapezium and add them together using the trapezium rule. So to, to use the trapezium rule, what helps is to have a nice table. So I'm just going to make a table. Now I'll need for the table that's going to say x and y, and then I'm going to have um, basically three ordinates, 0 and pi over 6 and pi over 3. So I need a table like that. Okay. So here I'm going to have my x value, and this is my y value, which y is equal to cosine squared x. My x values are going to be 0, and they're going to be also... I've just covered this, haven't I? Let me just do something about that. One second. Oops, that didn't work, did it? Let's lock this in place. Okay, so move this up a little bit. That's better, so I can see what I did. Okay, so we got pi over 6 and pi over 3. 
that's pi over 6 and that's pi over 3 so all we have to do now is stick these values in our calculator so we just put in our calculator uh, cosine squared so what we can do is we can say all right let's find the cosine of 0 which we know is 1 I'm just going to show you how to get this done right here that's all so another bracket and I'm going to put squared so that's cosine 0 squared cosine 0 is 1 1 squared is 1 that's going to give me 1 okay and then you've got cosine pi over 6 um, now we know that the cosine of pi over 6 is equal to root 3 over 2 so this is like root 3 over 2 squared root 3 over 2 squared is going to give me 3 over 4 so that's 3 quarters and the cosine of pi over 3 or well, the cosine of pi 3 is a half and a half squared is a quarter okay just to confirm it for you the cosine of pi over 3 pi divided by 3 okay that's the cosine of 60 which is a half a half squared is a quarter so you can get a quarter there so we know those are the values now for to use the cosine rule to not cosine to use the trapezium rule what we do is we basically um, divide these into trapeziums so we basically think of this as a trapezium and this is a trapezium so we kind of estimating the area so we need the distance between the parallel sides which is pi over 6 so you've got pi over 6 divided by 2 times the sum of the parallel sides now the sum of the parallel sides here would be uh, basically this plus this and that would give you the area of this trapezium if you multiply it by pi over 6 divided by 2 and then you have to add to it the area of this trapezium which was going to be you know pi over 6 divided by 2 times this line times that line so basically what we see is this line is going to be used once this line is going to be used once and this one's going to be used twice so all we have to do here is do 1 plus 2 times 3 quarters plus a quarter okay with the trapezium rule you the first and the last one you don't multiply by 2 and but all the ones in the middle you multiply those y values by 2 so you're going to have pi over 12 times and that's 1 plus 3 over 2 or you can say plus 6 over 4 plus 1 over 4 6 over 4 so if 1 over 4 is 7 over 4 plus 1 is 11 over 4 okay does it say find the oh no they want the 3sf so I could just put that in my calculator but that's 4 over 4 plus 6 over 4 that's 10 over 4 plus 1 over 4 which is 11 over 4 but they want my answer in the end um, to 3sf so I'll just write this as 11 over 48 pi but then I need it to 3sf so you're going to have 11 over 48 pi okay and then you're going to round that to 3sf so 0 0.71994 0 0.71994 okay so let me just make a bit of space so I can continue here so therefore we can say the area is equal to is equal to 0 0.720 okay square units because that's the three significant figures as they asked now part C says the finite region s is bounded by the curve y equals sine squared x where x is measured in radians the positive coordinate axes and the line x equals pi over 3 using your answer to part b find an estimate for the area of s okay so uh, we need to use the answer to part b now the answer to part b was this that was the area of cosine squared x within the same region okay so what we need to do is we need to find the area for y equals sine squared x okay um, now what i have to do is try to express this in terms of what we have here so basically what we found is an estimate for um, the integral of cosine squared x with respect to x between 0 and pi over 3 and that estimate is 0 0.720 to 3sf okay um, what we have to find is the integral or an estimate of integral of 0 between 0 and pi of 3 of sine squared x with respect to x now I have to be able to use my answer to part a this is my answer to part a basically how do I use my answer to part a well I have to try to relate sine squared x and cosine squared x with each other I know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1 and if I rearrange um, this formula 
I can say sine squared x can be expressed as 1 minus cosine squared x. So I can rewrite this as the integral between 0 and pi over 3 of 1 minus cosine squared x with respect to x. And what I can do now is I can split this up into two parts. I can say this is the same as the integral of 1 with respect to x between pi over 3 and 0, which I am able to integrate. I can integrate 1. And a minus, or sorry, plus, no minus actually, because there's a minus here. It's a minus. Minus the integral between 0 and pi over 3 of cosine squared x with respect to x, which at the moment in our understanding of up to p2 we do not know how to integrate although we'll learn later on how to integrate this however you know even if we did know how to integrate this they wouldn't be answering the question because it says use your answer to part a so basically what we've got here is equal to what we had earlier and um, that's fine we can just write that down so this is going to be the integral of one with respect to x which is going to give me x and the limits are between pi over three and zero minus the answer to part a what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take the answer to part A, but write it in its more accurate form, which is 11 over 48 pi for now. I'll write it as 11 over 48 pi. And then in the end, I'll round to 3SF. Okay, so this is going to be pi over 3 minus 0 minus 11 over 48 pi. So I'm going to work out what that is first. I think that's still in my calculator. Yes. So I, it's going to be... That's going to be... Um, negative of that okay add pi over 3 pi over 3 and that gives me 5 over 48 pi okay which I can then round to 3SF does it say to 3SF use, yeah well, it says use, use your answer so I'll just now write that to 3SF that's 0 0.3272 0 0.3272 dot 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 so that's 0 0.327 square units and there's the answer to part um this is part c okay so we use the answer to part a to uh, or actually the answer to part b this was the answer to part b to find the answer to part c and there we have the question this is a very common type of question now in, in the new p2 papers where where they try to re relate your answer for trapezium rule to um, you know the next question is related to that somehow you have to try to express what they give you in terms of what you just found so we had to express sine squared x in terms of cosine squared x we just found basically what the estimate for the integral of cosine squared x was between those same values okay so that's how we deal with that question i hope that was clear thank you for watching um, other questions from this particular Solomon paper when I get around to do them of the C2 collection will be in this playlist. Other questions to do with integration, I'll put into this um, playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and on the top of the paper I'll take you to a P2 paper you might want to watch. Um, thank you and see you soon.